You've heard about pointers and their importance, now get to know them from a completely new perspective. In this video, I'm revealing an approach that will change the way you think about them. Let's get started! Memory is divided into memory locations, and each location holds a certain amount of data. These locations are organized sequentially, one after the other. Each memory location has a unique address that identifies its position in the memory space. Addresses are usually represented as hexadecimal numbers. When working with variables and programs, each variable is placed at a specific memory location. Let's define what a pointer is. A pointer is a variable that stores the address of data rather than the data itself. While regular variables hold actual data, pointers hold memory addresses. Pointers are used to indirectly access and manipulate data in memory. So the question is, why do you need to access data indirectly? So let us understand why actually we need pointers. Then we will see how to declare and use them. Consider the main memory of a computer, which is divided into three sections, code, stack, and heap. The CPU executes our program, but how is this memory utilized? The code section contains the program itself, including the main function and other functions. The program can directly access the code section and the stack, but it cannot directly access the heap. The heap is a separate area of memory used for dynamic allocation, and it is external to the program's immediate access. To access memory in the heap, the program needs a pointer. One of the main reasons for using pointers is to access heap memory. A pointer within the program allows it to reference and manipulate data stored in the heap. For example, if you have an array or any data structure allocated in the heap, you need a pointer to access it. The pointer serves as a bridge to reach and manage this dynamically allocated memory. Similarly, if a program needs to interact with files on a hard disk, it cannot access these files directly because the hard disk is external to the program. Instead, the program uses file pointers, which are special types of pointers, to manage file access. In summary, pointers are crucial for accessing resources that are not directly accessible within the program, such as heap memory and external files. Now let's look at an example. First, we'll declare an integer variable a and initialize it by assigning the value 25. This variable will be located on the stack at a memory address that, for the purposes of this example, we can imagine as address 101. Although the compiler determines the exact address, we'll assume it is address 101. Next, we'll declare a pointer p. Note the syntax. First, we specify the data type in our case, intent, and the asterisk indicates that p is a pointer to an integer value. The pointer will also be created on the stack. After that, we assign the address of the variable a to the pointer p. The symbol and in front of the variable name signifies that we want to get the address of that variable. Thus, the pointer p points to the variable a. To access the value at the memory location the pointer points to, we use the dereferencing operation. In our case, asterisk p will dereference the pointer p and return the value from the memory location the pointer points to, which is 25. Therefore, the output at the end of this code example will display the value of the variable a, which is 25. Similarly, dereferencing the pointer p will also output 25. Now that you understand the fundamental concept of pointers and their role in accessing different memory sections, let's delve into a key aspect of memory management, dynamic memory allocation. In the context of pointers, dynamic memory allocation allows programs to request and manage memory on the heap during runtime. So let's see how we can allocate memory in the C language. We've created a pointer to an integer type and initialized it as null. This means our pointer points to nothing at the moment. The malloc function in C is used for memory allocation. It requires the number of bytes you need to allocate as an argument. The function size of int returns the number of bytes used for one integer. In this example, we need to allocate space for five integers. This size is assigned to pointer p. Since malloc returns a void asterisk, we need to typecast this return value to a pointer of the type we need, which is int 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 in our case. Thus, we have allocated space for five integers in the heap memory using C. Similarly, in C++, you can achieve the same result using the new operator. After the new operator, you specify the data type, in this case int, and in square brackets, you provide the number of elements, in this case five, to allocate an array of five integers in the heap memory. It is crucial to remember that any allocated memory must be deallocated to prevent memory leaks. If you allocate memory and never deallocate it, the memory is consumed from the total available memory. If this continues, your application may run out of memory and crash. 
Therefore, it's very important to deallocate memory when you are finished with it, so that the memory can be reused by other parts of the program. Now we come to another important aspect of using pointers, passing parameters to functions. Let's consider an example using a swap function that takes the addresses of two variables as arguments to swap their values. We'll go through the process step by step. Our program is stored in main memory within the code section. Execution starts from the main routine, which creates an activation record on the stack for the main function. Next, variables A and B are declared and initialized on the stack. When we call the swap function, we pass the addresses of these two variables, allowing the function to directly access and modify A and B. When the swap function is invoked, an activation record for the swap function is created on the stack. Two pointers are set up to point to the addresses of A and B, as specified in the call. Within the swap activation record, a temporary variable temp is created. The value pointed to by P1 is stored in temp, then the value pointed to by P2 is copied into the location pointed to by P1. Note that dereferencing is used here. Finally, the value stored in temp is copied into the location pointed to by P2. As a result, the values of A and B are swapped directly on the stack using an external function and passing parameters by reference. To summarize, we have explored what pointers are, how to use them, and why they are important. We also covered the application of pointers in dynamic memory allocation and in passing parameters to functions. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into these languages and explore their many powerful features in upcoming videos. See you in the next one!